Well, hello. Uh, I'm sorry I can't be with you tonight, but for reasons which are related to family, it's impossible at the moment. Um, this is probably the best way that I can contribute to today's discussion. Uh, it's thanks to Matthew for uh, helping out with this video, because it's, it's something I'm not particularly good at. But basically I want to say a few words about the social model of disability. And uh, this is important because over the last few years there's been a lot of nonsense talked about the social model, much of which is politically motivated or career motivated, depending on which perspective you want to look at it. But effectively, politicians, policymakers, and several academics and even disabled people have undermined the importance of the social model over the last decade and this has led to in many respects the kind of situation that we are now in. So basically I want to clarify what the social model is and what its, its aims and objectives are. This is important because in many respects the social model is probably the most important idea that's come out of the disabled people's movement in the last 50 years. Uh, it has its roots in the 1970s in organisations like the Uni Un Union of the Physically Impaired Against Segregation, Spinal Injuries Association and so on. And it is undoubtedly um, had a major impact on policy issues across the world. If you care to look at the UN Convention on the Rights of in Inverted Commas Persons with Disabilities, it covers all aspects of the human experience, which is a direct outcome, if you like, although there are flaws with the convention, of the impact of the social model on international thinking. Most countries across the world now recognise that disability discrimination is a major problem, and this is undoubtedly uh, a result of the impact of the social model. Okay? So, basically... All the social model is, or what the social model is, according to Mike Oliver, who coined the phrase in 1981, is a specific reflection or a specific focus on the various social forces, economic, political and cultural, which shape disabled people's lives. In other words, the various barriers, economic, political and cultural, which result in disabled people's disadvantage and poverty, oppression and so on and so forth. And to do this, the social model following the Union of the Physically Impaired Against Segregation attempt to clarify what the word disability is. And consequently, it separates out the concept impairment from the concept, in dis uh, concept disability. This is important because if you're going to identify barriers, social, political, whatever barriers, then you need to be clear about what you're talking about. If you bring impairment into the debate, uh, into the concept of disability, it's easy to come out with the solution, well, it's an individual problem and not a social problem. So you need to be clear about what the social model is. So the social model basically separates impairment from disability. Impairment is basically perceptions of function, bodily, structure, intellect, whatever, which is deemed generally by the general population to be seen as abnormal, unacceptable, uh, and so on and so forth. It includes physical conditions, intellectual conditions, sensory conditions. So it includes issues around learning difficulties, mental health problems, and so on, and even health conditions which are acquired through the general life course. One of the things that's crucial to remember when thinking about impairment is, is that the most common causes of impairment are socially created. Only a minority of the general population are born with conditions which are deemed impairment. Most people acquire impairments through the life course, 
So accident, violence, uh, poverty, war, pollution, and so on. Impairment is a common human experience. Most people, if they live long enough, will be impaired in one form or another. It's an inevitable consequence of the ageing process. And as a consequence of medical interventions, health, improved health, uh, and so on in Western countries and long, longer living, there are more disabled people around today than ever before in the past. So to suggest that impairment is a minority issue is nonsense. What is significant is that the number of people who experience impairment and are labelled disabled is also increasing. And this is because of society's preoccupation with unattainable uh, bodily lifestyles and, and living conditions. Okay? So disability is a socially created concept from this perspective. That's not to say that certain issues that have been brought forward by critics and others about the social model are no longer relevant. For example, the social model does not deny the significance of impairment or its limitations on how we function. What it does do is focus on the way in which society denies access our facilities to enable people with impairments to live a normal lifestyle or in what is considered normal. The impact on disabled people's everyday living. A social model is not a theory. It is a tool with which to identify barriers with a view to eradicating, finding solutions to eradicate those problems. One of which, of course, was anti-discrimination legislation. But that was not never seen as an end result. It was seen as a stepping stone, a recognition that disability was an issue for social policy issues, that discrimination, prejudice and oppression were common. Okay? So it's to, su to suggest that disability is as a equal opportunities issue on a par with race, gender uh, and non-normal sexual activities and so on and so forth, whatever non-normal sexual activities are. It's also important to remember that we are creating and changing our perceptions of impairment all the time. It's not too long ago, for example, that um, gay and lesbian people were defined as impaired. And in the 19th century, women and black people and any non-European Aryan race were considered uh, inferior and with various sort of biological and intellectual limitations. So what we decide is impairment is socially created as well as uh, other issues. Okay. It's important to remember too that the social model is not a denial of the importance of medical interventions. Um, you know, when we all get ill, we all have issues around health and impairment and so on. But when people go to the doctors, we say what our impairment is, and we hope the doctor will and medical interventions will resolve those issues. Okay? But that doesn't give doctors the, the right or the, the privilege to decide on what kind of lifestyles we should have, whether we should go to this school or that school, what kind of employment we should have, whether we should have children and so on and so forth. The problem with the medical model of disability, if you want to use that term, is the fact that it's being used to justify a whole range of issues which are both discriminating and limiting in terms of allowing disabled people to live the lifestyle which they choose. So basically that's what the social model is. To suggest it's anything else is false, basically. It's as relevant today as it was 
30 years ago. Probably more so given the current government's attempt to reverse the situation and given the current attempt by various academics to say it's no, rele no longer relevant to the 21st century. If we abandon the social model as originally intended by UPAS, UPIAS, Mike Oliver and the Disabled People's Movement of the early 90s, then we abandon the struggle for a fairer and just society. Not simply for disabled people, but people generally. Because as I tried to point out earlier, impairment is a common experience. It's not peculiar to one set of one section of the community and disabled people are just like everybody else in the sense they have a right to a decent quality of life, a situation which has been increasingly denied by current government policy. Okay, uh, if you have any queries or if you've got any um, problems with what I've said, then if Debbie and Bob can answer them, then send me an email at the University of Leeds. Have a great evening. Thanks very much indeed.